So this is a requested review from one of my patrons. Thank you very much for your support. An Inconvenient Truth, the 2005 documentary film about global warming presented by none other than Al Gore. I have to confess, I had not watched this film prior to being asked to review it, though it was always a film I'd promised myself I'd get around to watching someday. Because of the nature of this film being a documentary, my analysis, of course, will be regarding the quality of the arguments made and not on things like aesthetics, production values, and story. I feel like I can't really do this without first giving my thoughts on global warming, known more popularly now as climate change, of course. There is a significant amount of evidence that confirms that us human beings are indeed increasing our planet's average temperatures. Renowned and eminent scientists have presented clear and compelling evidence that we're at least making some contribution to altering the Earth's climate and not at all for the better. The problem appears to be that so far, despite the evidence, most predictions made by climate scientists over the past number of decades have been proven wrong. Now, I have to say, I'm not a climate change skeptic. I believe that this is indeed happening. We are having a negative impact. However, clearly the timescales we've been presented with are grossly inaccurate. The data suggests something is indeed happening, but the environmental and ecological damage is being insanely exaggerated. Any negative impacts we're having on global temperatures won't begin to manifest themselves until a much later date in the future. The mass hysteria generated by the climate change movement and its proponents seems irresponsible and politically motivated, with scientific studies riddled with confirmation bias designed to suit an agenda. In 2007, a UK High Court ruled that An Inconvenient Truth contained nine major scientific errors. The film wasn't banned for being shown in schools or anything, but was ruled that it must be shown with a guidance note in order to prevent political indoctrination. Here are some of the things that the film got wrong, according to the High Court ruling. Mr. Gore claims that a sea level rise of up to 20 feet would be caused by melting of either West Antarctica or Greenland in the near future. The judge said, this is distinctly alarmist and part of Mr. Gore's wake-up call. He agreed that if Greenland melted, it would release this amount of water, but only after and over millennia. The Armageddon scenario, he predicts, insofar as it suggests that sea level rises of 7 meters might occur in the immediate future, is not in line with the scientific consensus. The film claims that low-lying inhabited Pacific atolls are being inundated because of anthropogenic global warming, but the judge ruled there was no evidence of any evacuation having yet happened. The documentary speaks of global warming shutting down the ocean conveyor, the process by which the Gulf Stream is carried over the North Atlantic to Western Europe, citing the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. The judge said that it was very unlikely that this would shut down in the future, though it might slow down. Mr. Gore said that coral reefs all over the world were being bleached because of global warming and other factors. Again, citing the IPCC, the judge agreed that if temperatures were to rise by 1 to 3 degrees centigrade, there would be increased coral bleaching and mortality, unless the coral could adapt. However, he ruled that separating the impacts of stresses due to climate change from other stresses, such as overfishing and pollution, was difficult. There's no doubt that the human-made greenhouse effect is damaging the planet, but the impact is being blown way out of proportion. This is occurring over a much slower span of time than climate change political proponents would have us believe. It's actually becoming a scientific scandal at this point, and for an important reason, taxation. Forgive my cynicism here, but take a look at this picture of world leaders at yet another climate change summit. And there's tons of these you'll find online. These globalist leaders, as we know, have proven time and time again that they care very little about the future of their countries. And if you want evidence of that, look at the migrant crisis, for example. Look at how they've sold out to multiculturalism and transnational corporate interests. Yet here we have these leaders posing for photos to virtue signal about how much they care about the distant future of our world. These leaders don't even care about the culture and the national identity of their own countries. And some of them have done pretty terrible jobs in protecting their citizens when it comes to terrorism. Yet they double down on their policies and instead seek to censor those who speak out. So if they don't care about their citizens in the short term, why the hell would they care about them in the long term? These are career politicians looking for power and wealth and nice comfortable fat pensions in their retirement. The distant future is probably of little concern to these people. 
They tell us there's a major invisible problem with our climate. And then they say, don't worry, we've got the answer. More energy regulations, more green carbon taxes, more emissions charges. This has become a cash grab exercise wrapped up in good old snake oil. What makes you trust these people? There actually hasn't been any significant temperature increases since the late 90s. The planet goes through its natural temperature rhythms and cycles of having warmer and cooler periods all the time. This isn't controversial. Yet we're expected to believe that short-term weather anomalies are representative of long-term climate change. Okay, so it's wise to be vigilant and invest in alternative energy sources. And this process has already begun, in fact. But the urgency and the fear-mongering is highly irresponsible. We were told in 2007 that ice in the Arctic would completely melt every summer by 2013. In truth, the ice is now thicker than it's been for over a decade. The UK has its coldest winter in 100 years in 2010. We now know that the polar ice caps are no longer in retreat. And yes, the polar bear, the symbol of global warming itself, their numbers have increased dramatically in the last 12 years. They're actually thriving now. It's even now been suggested that a new ice age could be soon upon us. Al Gore claims in the film that Kilimanjaro would be snow-free by now. And yet this prediction was also proven false. At the same time, I think it's important to say that I'm not with the hardline right-wing climate change deniers on this, who seem to ideologically oppose the very notion of man-made global warming. Their stance seems to be based around their understandable fear of big government that comes with increased taxation and regulations. They have a right, of course, to be skeptical, but it's impossible to deny the fact that 38.2 billion tons of carbon dioxide that we pump into the atmosphere every year has got to come back and bite us in the ass at some point. It's just that an inconvenient truth seems to suggest it's going to happen sooner rather than later.